Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the ASUS Intel Baseline Profile behavior. Um, it's I've already noticed something weird, as in the Intel Baseline Profile seems to be a bit sticky, as in if you turn it on, a clear CMOS doesn't necessarily turn it off again, uh, which is a yeah, I'm I'm kind of annoyed about that, because, like, with the Gigabyte board, I was, like, you know, I showed the whole, like, hey, I cleared CMOS and then everything. Here, that's not an option, unfortunately, but, uh, I guess we can do the next best thing, which, uh, because, like, I can't really do, like, an out-of-box configuration, because, like, after I enable the Intel baseline, even if I hit the clear CMOS, it's still going to be on Intel baseline, but I'll, I'll show that to you later. And I, honestly, I think that's, like, from a end, like, from a user uh, convenience perspective, that's actually a sensible decision on from Asus, that like after you turn on Intel Baseline, it, it doesn't get turned off after a clear CMOS, because if you turned on Intel Baseline and, I don't know, you started messing with memory overclocking or something, and then you clear CMOS, it's nice that I you don't really have to turn it back on again, I guess? It's just kind of strange that like the... It's it's a bit weird that, like, your very first boot would actually be uh, load-optimized defaults, not Intel Baseline. So anyway, we're going to do load-optimized defaults. Um, right, we're just going to do that. Um, the funny thing... Well, yeah. And we're going to check in the BIOS what kind of, like, uh, internal CPU power settings we have with that. Um... If you have an Asus motherboard, you can, like, check that I'm not, you know, like, messing with anything here. Because load-optimized defaults, as far as I know, should behave pretty similarly on Asus boards. Um, so, if, especially if you have an Apex, I imagine you'd end up with this... You, you should end up it with the same settings, assuming, of course, you're on the 1202 BIOS from load-optimized defaults. So, anyway, internal CPU power management. Uh, we have, like, no current limit, uh, power limit. Yeah, so the PL1 is set to 253. PL2 is set to 4,000 watts, so a bit less aggressive than what we have on the Gigabyte board, um, because the Gigabyte board was setting PL1 to 280, uh, and also didn't have a current limit, but the PL2 is the same on both of them. Uh, AC-DC load line, we unfortunately can't see what they are. Uh, IACEP and uh, SACEP, like, so these are disabled, um, which is not surprising. And SVID, every, like, this is all on auto. Right, um, and I think the SVID behavior over here is also auto, so we'll just leave all that alone. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's see how this behaves once we're uh, once we're in the OS. Um, so this isn't going to be able to run Cinebench. It, I think it's very slightly more stable than the Gigabyte board was, but uh, th this really shouldn't be able to run Cinebench. Um. In this configuration. Anyway, so we're back in the OS, um, and we're obviously going to take a look at like single core voltages and all core voltages. Uh, well, actually, we're not really going to get much of a look at all core voltages because it's going to well, actually, R20 might run on this board. R I mean, R23 might run on this board. Uh, 15 probably won't. Anyway, but, like, idle voltages right now, you know, they're not looking too ridiculous. We did briefly see, like, 1.4 volts there. Um, but nothing too insane. Also, I am, you know, monitoring the V-Core sensor over here, but that's DiSense. So that should be equivalent to the uh, VRV out sensor that I was using on the Gigabyte board, it's just going to have slightly less resolution. Because off the top of my head, I think VRV out has like 2 millivolts of resolution, whereas this, I think, has like 6 or 12, uh, depending on what kind of Super IO chip um, this is. Anyway, uh, that doesn't really matter that much. Like, you know, a, like the the resolution like we're looking at voltages voltage differences so large that the sensor resolution isn't really relevant. Um, so let's try run R15. Also, I guess we're just going to quickly take a look at the power limits in hardware info, which, uh, where are they? Um, yeah, so you can see 4,000 for PL2 and, uh, 253 for PL1. 
Um, and this is, of course, not going to be able to run Cinebench 15. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I was so worried. Because <laughs> earlier, like, it was, it was working, but that was because it was, like, stuck on the Intel baseline profile. And the reason I say it was stuck on the Intel baseline profile is because when I ran 23, the score was really low. I mean, 15's, 15 was also scoring kind of low, so... Um, but, like, 15 is so quick that it might have, like, weird uh, issues with uh, being reliable. So, yeah, R15 on uh, the, like, load-optimized default settings, which if you're... The first time you boot up an Asus motherboard, you're going to be on load-optimized defaults. Uh, you're not going to be on an Intel baseline, um, at least as far as I know, right? So the, this would be the out-of-box experience. You buy the motherboard, you put the CPU in, you try to run Cinebench, it doesn't run Cinebench. Um, if you're unlucky, because it is worth noting that there are CPUs out there that you, you know, you buy the board, you put the CPU in, and Cinebench does work. Um, but if you're not lucky and you have a CPU with an SP, like mine has an SP rating of 91, which is really, really bad. Uh, for comparison, like the one of the best 14900Ks I'm aware of has an SP rating of like well over 100. Um, so, you know, like, there's a lot of variance in the silicon quality for the 14900K and also even the 14900KS. And so if you're unlucky, like, if you lose the silicon lottery, you get a chip like this that, you know, on Asus load-optimized defaults or gigabyte uh, auto settings, it won't run Cinebench. Um, and if you get lucky, you'll have a chip that'll run Cinebench just fine. That's why, like, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are like, oh, but my CPU doesn't have any issues. And it's like, yeah, good for you. You got a good one. And then there's people who it's like, oh, I can't play Fortnite because Unreal Engine is crashing. Or, uh, you know, the people who complained to NVIDIA enough that NVIDIA had to put a note in their driver, like put a comment in their driver patch notes about how like, hey, if you have a 14th gen or 13th gen high-end CPU and your stuff is crashing with like out of video memory errors, yeah, that's not us, that's Intel. Go complain to them. Um, so I don't know how common this issue is, but it is like, it's real and you just have to lose the silicon lottery to, to end up in this situation, basically. If you win the, and I guess it's not really winning if you have a CPU that just functions out of the box. <laughs> that, that, that you, you know, that would be like the, you would just kind of expect it to work. Um, anyway, let's try to run Cinebench R23 for the, uh, I'm not sure if we're actually going to get a score out of it. It might run. Might. Because 23 usually isn't quite as bad about locking up as 15. Um. Because I do, like, ideally I want to see what kind of score we get here. So, whoa. Whoa. That's, yeah, so that's a really good score. Um, 41.5 thousand. Um, that's, uh, that's, I, th it's by far the highest score I've seen the CPU get. Um, so, you know, like, this, this is the whole reason why these motherboards, and th this is the funny thing, right, on the Gigabyte board, I wasn't able to run R23, and 15 was crashing even faster, and the biggest difference is between these two boards, um, like, the power limit on this Asus board we might have hit PL1 for that R23 run, but the other difference is, is like the Apex has one of the best voltage regulators on LGA 1700. So in terms of like voltage regulation, this board should be better than the Gigabyte board. Um, so that would help because I still think that the issue is like the CPU is just crashing because it's not getting enough voltage under load. So, you know, better voltage regulation would kind of help with that. Um, and then potentially we might have dipped into PL1, and PL1 here is somewhat lower, um, which would help towards the end of the benchmark. Um, but yeah, that's like a really, really good score for this chip. So anyway, um, so the motherboard will actually somewhat affect the instability as well. Also, I don't know what the default AC-DC load line from Asus is, so maybe Asus is running like more AC load line. Right, like if this is running, like the Gigabyte board was defaulting to 40, if this is defaulting to 50, 
So 0.5 milliohms, or maybe it's defaulting to 0.6 milliohms. I don't think it's defaulting to 0.6 because I don't think on 0.6 we could get such a high score. But if this is default also on 0.6, I would kind of expect 15 to probably actually pass instead of crash. But um, yeah, um, so, but it could also be that this is running 0.4 AC load line, but it has better voltage regulation than the gigabyte board does. So even if they run the exact same load line settings, one of them is more stable than the other. And this is why, like, again, I just find it so stupid that Intel's specification for 14th gen encourages the motherboard vendors to figure out their optimal load line settings their se themselves. Because, yeah, they're really going to do a good job of that, aren't they? <laughs> Imagine, well, actually, I, I said this in the in the previous video, but if NVIDIA encouraged their GPU manufacturers to ship cards with random amounts of undervoltage, you would get cards that, like, run at, like, the, like, the performance difference from card to card would be kind of ridiculous. Because NVIDIA cards, they don't crash, necessarily, if you undervolt them a bunch. Um, they clock stretch. Potentially quite a lot. So, um... Yeah, anyway, so yeah, this won't run 15, but it will run 23. Uh, 23 runs pretty good, so now let's take a look at that single core load voltage. Um, I can't imagine that it's going to be too ridiculous. Yeah, we're looking at like 1.3, 1.4-ish uh, for that uh, 6 gigahertz. Yep, we're getting that 6 gigahertz P-core over there. If I move the mouse around, we're getting like 1.45. Um, so that behavior seems to be just pretty consistent between the like the gigabyte board and the asus board where it's like yeah moving the mouse around for whatever reason boosts the voltage i guess it like the the thing is like moving the mouse around can actually cause some pretty nasty transients depending on what exactly is going on so i guess that's why the the voltage is getting raised as the cpu is like expecting undershoot or something so it's boosting the vid upwards um And if I don't move the mouse around, I'm guessing it dips down to 1.3, maybe? Or no, it just kind of sits at 1.4. So this is the, like, Asus uh, default behavior. Um, so yeah, nothing nothing too crazy there. Um, just for good measure, like, 15 really w won't run. Will it? Yeah, so 15, 15 just absolutely will not run. It's kind of weird how, like, 15 is so much, like, harder to pass than 23. Um, anyway, let's turn on the Intel baseline. And see, this is, like, I still think it's really silly on Intel's part to just let the, volt like, the motherboard manufacturers play with the voltage regulator settings like this, because... How is the motherboard vendor supposed to know how much, like, undervoltage margin a random Intel CPU has? Um, I really wish I knew what the AC-DC load line settings on this were. And also, like, another issue is that, like, different boards have, like, uh, different, you know, voltage regulator designs. But the thing is, like, to be fair, like, the, the spec does say, hey, you're supposed to measure this. <laughs> but, you know, like, you're you're provided with a voltage, like a test tool that you're you're and you should measure your like voltage behavior like voltage regulator capabilities and then set the ac and dc load lines accordingly but like i think it would make way more sense if intel just said look your ac dc load line has to be this and if your board is better then like no you don't get to lower it um because that would at least ensure that you know even potato cpus like mine actually function out of the box. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so now we're going to load up the, you know, actually, no, I'm not going to load up the Intel baseline profile. I'm going to try the fix from the gigabyte board here. I really wish what the ACDC load lines were on this board right now, though. I'm, I'm just going to punch in the settings from the gigabyte board. So like 0.9 and, uh, point uh seven right because that worked on the gigabyte board um and then we're going to try the intel baseline because the thing is like turning the intel baseline off is kind of weird <laughs>
Now, also, it's worth noting that just because my CPU reacts, like, well to these, like, ACDC load line adjustments doesn't necessarily mean all CPUs would. Um... Right? So, like, I don't know, maybe there's somebody with, like, m like my CPU has an SP rating of 91 uh, on the, on, like, on the Apex. I could have sworn it was a 93. Um, but then again, the SP ratings do actually slightly change between BIOS versions, so... Um, maybe I'm, or I'm misremembering what the SP rating on this chip was. Or it managed to degrade <laughs> while sitting in its packaging. Um... Hey, R15 runs. Oh, and it's scoring better than the Gigabyte board did. Temperatures are spicy. But yeah, so that fixes the R15. I guess I could also try, like, lowering the AC load line a bit or something. Whoa, it's really spitting out some, like, high scores now. Um, the Gigabyte board was, like, topping out at, like, 6300, and this is doing 6400. So... Yeah, like, basically, I don't know what the auto ACDC load line settings on this board are, but they're evidently not high enough for this CPU. Um, it's almost like maybe Intel should have required a actual, like, hard limit for how much you can lower the AC fucking load line, but... Anyway, let's see what, what my uh, questionable fix does to the single core voltage. Yeah, it makes it worse. <laughs> It's not great. Um, it's not too surprising, I guess. Um, so we're going to just quickly stop that. And I want to run all core and see what happens there. I imagine we might lose a little bit of performance for all core. Because that's like the whole reason the motherboard vendors are pushing the AC load line like as low as they can. Is because if the CPU is stable, it actually boosts the performance. Um, right? So that's why like pushing the AC load line as low as it goes is, like, a good idea. Um, right up until your CPU locks up. Um, and I think we might have hit the PL1 for this. Though it is now kind of scoring like the Gigabyte board was, so maybe that's just, um, like, it's th like it's throttling the same amount as the Gigabyte board was. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not hitting PL one. It's just power. Like it's just uh, because the voltage under load is higher. It's throttling the frequency back more, right? To s m maintain the thermal limit of a hundred degrees Celsius. So that's like the whole reason why the motherboard vendors have like every incentive to just push the AC load line into the ground. And if some CPUs don't work, sucks to be you. <laughs> So, anyway, we're now going to load up the uh, Intel baseline profile. Because, yeah, like, the, the thing is, if you run a higher AC load line, it fixes the stability, but your performance goes down the drain. Or, well, it doesn't really go down the drain as much as the Intel baseline profile makes it go down the drain, but it, it's not as high as it is if, you know, you're on the ragged edge of the AC load line just about... or the AC load line being too low and causing instability, right? And how serious that instability is depends on, like, your motherboard, how lucky you got with the silicon lottery, and it's just, like... Like... It just seems so silly to me to have a voltage regulator spec and then go, like, yeah, and you can just freaking undervolt the CPU. Um, out of the box. That, that like, that's definitely not going to affect stability in, neg in a negative way whatsoever. So, uh, did just load optimized defaults, so that should have cleared out the load line settings. Yes. Um, and now let's load up Intel Baseline. So, the Asus Intel Baseline profile is not as, uh, well, it's a lot less silly than the Gigabyte one. Um. At least on the Apex, it's a lot less silly, because, or at least with this 14900K on the Apex, it's less silly, because I've... 
Like, I've not seen proof of this, but I have heard that even on some Asus boards, you might see very high uh, idle voltages with the Intel baseline profile. And that could be because maybe some other boards have like a worse voltage regulator. So the baseline profile runs even more voltage or something. Or maybe it's like the 14900. Because if you look at the vid tables for like a 14900KS, some of them are really high. And so like if you have a KS and then you combine that with the Intel baseline profile, that maybe sets the voltage to th through the roof again. But... At least with my 14900K, um, this the Intel baseline profile on Asus is nowhere near as wild as the Gigabyte one. Um, so, yeah, so obviously, well, idle voltage is like, this still looks fine to me. Um, and of course, Cinebench 15 does run. It, of course, it also hurts the score a bit. Um... And the Asus Intel baseline profile actually sets like a 280 amp current limit um, and a 253 watt power limit for both PL1 and PL2 with the 14900K. I don't know, maybe they do something different for the i5 and the i7. Actually, i7, I would think they use the same thing, but i5, they might use lower limits. Um, though the i5s don't really seem to have this many stability issues because they just don't run very high clocks so they're they tend to have more like margin on the under voltage um so yeah r15 works it's obviously slower than it used to be um if we run r23 that's also going to be slower surprisingly the well, the Intel baseline profile for the Apex and the Gigabyte baseline profile, the, the performance in R23, at least before you hit the PL1, is actually not that different. Um, which I just find kind of interesting. Oh, wait, no, this is way higher. Because, yeah, the Gigabyte board was doing, like, what, 34,000-ish points, and we're doing, like, 37,000 points. So that's, like, it's like almost 10% uh, faster on the Apex. Uh, here. So yeah, I don't know what Gigabyte's Intel baseline profile is supposed to be. Anyway, um, if you run single core, uh, the voltages are... Yeah, if I move the mouse around, we hit 1.5, but like, that's really not that bad. So yeah, like, it does run more voltage than the Asus defaults, but it's not, you know... It's not freaking 1.7 volts or something, so I don't really see this as a... I mean, it's not even close to the 1.7 volts we were kind of getting on that gigabyte board, so... I don't really see too much of a problem with this. Um... So, yeah, like... The Asus Intel baseline profile, at least with this CPU on this motherboard, seems pretty sensible. I don't, like, you know, uh, if you had a KS and you had a vid table, because if we look at the vid table here on this CPU, um, the, like, it's possible that I, like, if you had a CPU that had a vid table with an even higher maximum vid, you might get even higher maximum, like, idle voltages. Um, but I don't have a, you know, like, I don't have a really bad 14900KS. Um, I imagine that would be, like, the worst, like, that, that would, I would assume that if you get, like, a really bottom bin 14900KS, that would probably be the CPU that gets the highest voltages on Intel baseline. I don't have one, and I don't really want one. <laughs> I definitely don't want to buy one. Um... What did I want to look at? Uh, AI features. Yeah, so here you can see the like the vid table for this CPU. And this kind of changed. Because it used to be like frequencies instead of like core vids. But... Anyway, so... <clears throat> oh, here it is. Right, yeah. 
VF curve offset. So yeah, you can see how like for six gigahertz, the the vid table is at like one point four nine nine volts. Um, on, on this CPU. So with the with the Intel baseline profile, we're basically hitting that at this point. Um, so I guess cool. Um, actually, I wonder if they did anything. Well, it says auto, so if they did do anything, I I can't see it. But uh, let's take a look at the internal CPU power management. So yeah, Asus like the current limit is set to 280, uh, and then the power limit is 253 and 253. Um, And obviously the CEP settings got turned on as well. So yeah, the like Intel uh, baseline profile also it like set the SVID behavior to Intel failsafe, um, but like. I'm not seeing anything that crazy here. So this, to me, like, the Asus Intel baseline looks fine. Um, at least with my CPU. It, it doesn't, like... Like, again, I don't know. Maybe the 1.5 volts for 6 gigahertz on a single core isn't idle. I mean, isn't ideal. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's not idle. It's running Cin Cinebench, but, like... Maybe, yeah, maybe that's not ideal, but it's certainly less bad than the, like, 1.67 that the Gigabyte board was doing. <clears throat> and in terms of the performance impact, the, the Asus uh, in baseline profile, I'm really not sure if this should have Intel's name on it, these baseline profiles, because it's like, what? first of all, like, why is the Gigabyte one so different from the Asus one? Um... If they're, like, supposedly from Intel. Um, right? Like, at least you would think these baseline profiles are provided by Intel, considering that it has Intel in the name. Um, so, yeah, but if nothing else, like, the Asus Intel baseline profile is better than the Gigabyte one. It doesn't use as much voltage. Uh, it doesn't lose as much performance. Um, is it actually perfectly safe? I don't know. Um, right? Like, that's something that, like, like Intel would know if the, what this is doing is safe or not. Or at least I would hope that Intel knows if what this is doing right now is safe or not. Right? Um... And, um, uh, yeah, but, so I'm, I like the, like I said at the end of the last video, I think this whole situation is just completely stupid. <laughs> like, we have supposedly Intel baseline profiles now that aren't even the same across different motherboard vendors. Uh, the Gigabyte one uses just insanity voltages. Uh, this one, like, it runs more voltage... It, it runs more voltage than the board ran on auto, right? Like, um, like we're just going to load optimized defaults again, and I'm, I'm going to just check single course in a bench. Uh, so, like, I still stand by my theory of, like, the motherboards. The reason, like, the whole reason you can buy a brand new 14900K or a 14900KS, put it in your brand new motherboard, and then be unable to run Cinebench R15 if you lost the silicon lottery, is because the motherboards are running unvalidated undervolts, which were encouraged by Intel. Um, so that's, like, the instability, as far as I'm concerned, is Intel's fault. I still don't really believe that the CPUs are degrading on especially the undervolted settings that most motherboards seem to be using. Um, though I do realize, like, there's reports of people having chips that ran fine for, like, months and months and months, and then suddenly it got unstable, but it's like, maybe there was, like, a software update or something that, like, changed how the CPU is getting loaded. Um, you know, um... Maybe your ambient temperature slightly changed, and that, that was enough to push it over the edge, right? Um, I 
Actually, I should have probably checked that the Intel baseline profile is turned off again first. Yeah, so like single corp, man, it's not even going over 1.4 now. So the Intel baseline profile consistently adds voltage across all vendors. Um, on Gigabyte, it in adds insane amounts of voltage. I don't know why. Um, on Asus, it doesn't add nearly as much. That's good. Oh, wait, we got it to, like, 1. Point. It's still less than the 1.5 volts that the Intel baseline was, was hitting, right? I don't think we've gotten... Um, no, 1.483, so it's gotten kind of close. But, yeah, it's, it's not anywhere near as aggressive as the uh, Intel baseline profile was with the voltages. It's just not stable. Um... Obviously, the Intel baseline profile also enables a bunch of power limits. So, like, if the CPUs are degrading due to the current that is being pulled and not because of the voltage. So, if, like, because you could have, like, the, they, you know, like, the degradation mechanisms are kind of different. Um, so, it's, like, if the CPUs are degrading due to the current, then the Intel baseline profile will actually, like, even though it raises the voltage, it'll reduce the current draw. So the CPU won't degrade. Um, if the CPUs are degrading through due to the voltage in and of itself, then especially Gigabyte's Intel baseline profile is going to just destroy the P cores, um, the six gigahertz P cores, because it will just slam like 1.6 volts into them um, on the high like on the highest frequency CPUs. So like the 14700K, 13900KS. 14900KS, 14900K, 13900K probably as well, because it's like 5.8 for the P-cores, isn't it? For max frequency. Um, yeah, and if we try to run R15 right now with the load-optimized defaults, um, it will not run. Will it? Yeah, no, it won't. Um, <coughs> so... Yeah, ultimately, I don't really know what to make of the situation. Um, like, as far as I'm concerned, the, like, immediate out-of-box instability, that's an undervolt problem. Like, the motherboards are just not giving the chips enough voltage to be stable when you're running unlimited power limits. Now, uh, are the power limits supposed to be unlimited? Because, it, like... Like, Intel has, like, recently got, come out and been like, well, nobody, like, people aren't running our recommended power limits. They should, like, do that. And it's like, yeah, but, you know, in the past, Intel was completely okay with that. Um, Intel didn't complain about, like, CPU reviewers running, you know, review samples with no power limit and getting unrealistically high scores in a bunch of benchmarks. Right? Like, this CPU with no power limit gets, like, 41,000 points, and if I turn on the Intel baseline profile, it gets, uh, um, what is it? It gets, like, uh, 37,000 points. Actually, now that I mention that, you know what? Let's see what happens if I just set the power limits and the current limit to, like, 253 and 307. Um, like, what does that do to the score, and does it also fix the Cinebench R15 stability? Though I'm pretty sure I've heard of people that have, like, CPUs that are so bad that even if you set the current limit to, like, 307 amps, they still crash. So, like, that that's, like, part of the issue here is, like, like this is tied also to the, like, how good the CPU is from the factory. Um... I'm I'm really wondering what kind of score we're going to get with the, what I just punched in. Because, like, the Intel baseline... Well, I don't have the SVID set to default, so the voltages are going to be lower, so the score's not going to be quite so bad. I mean, Intel fail-safe.
This really shouldn't crash at this point. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, the score is not very high, but the stability is fine. And R23. But then again, like, I have heard of people who have CPUs that if they did what I just did, it wouldn't fix the instability. And also, like, I haven't checked if, like, Unreal Engine is heavier than, uh, you know, like, Cinebench R15 in terms of detecting the instability. Um... Oh, yeah, it kind of, like, tanks the score, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, this isn't really scoring that much better than the Intel baseline profile is. And at least we're not running the, like, higher voltages that the Intel baseline profile uses, but, like... And that's the higher voltages for single-core load. Obviously, for multi-core, I think the lower current limit would actually make the Intel baseline profile run either similar or lower voltages than what I'm running right now. Um, but yeah, like this whole situation is just a stupid mess. Where's my vCore sensor? There it is. Oh, apparently we hit 1.5. But we're on the ASUS defaults right now. Um, uh, well, I mean, ultimately, this still isn't anywhere near as bad as the things the Gigabyte board was doing, but... Actually, I, I think idle on the Gigabyte board might have been lower, very slightly. I'm, I'm not sure enough that, like, if it would be enough to actually matter, but... Yeah, so, well, that's that. Um, I'd, like, overall, I still, I like, the I'd say the... I wouldn't use the Gigabyte Intel Baseline Profile. I, I would just not. The Asus one, you know, if your CPU is, like, really unstable, and, at like, like I would probably try to RMA the CPU with Intel first. Um, though at this point, I think there's a decent chance that Intel might just tell you to turn on the Intel Baseline Profile. And, uh, well, you're screwed in that case. Right, because if like if they tell you to turn on the Intel baseline profile and your stability instability goes away, then you're keeping that CPU. Um, I don't think they're going to replace it at that point. Um, So, yeah. But, I mean, like, at least if you want a functional system and you're desperate, the, the Asus Intel baseline profile is, like, the Gigabyte one sketches me out. This kind of doesn't. Um, th th like, this, this seems way safer. <laughs> That doesn't necessarily mean it's safe, right? Like, I, I don't know. I don't have the, like, Intel... Like, Intel should have some data on, like, CPU reliability across the operating voltage range and, like, what kind of load that they expect the CPU to survive for how long uh, at those voltages and temperatures. Um... But if not, like, the... Like, I guess you could also, like, you could run Intel baseline and then intentionally lower the temperature limit to, like, keep the CPU running cooler, because lower temperatures help with, like, all aspects of degradation. Uh, I will mention that I did actually try just setting a lower temperature limit on the CPU to see if that would um, uh, help with the instability. It doesn't. The uh, temperature limit isn't quite as fast for throttling the CPU as the current limit. So if your CPU is unstable, you basically, like, your options are basically setting a current limit or messing with the AC and DC load line to try fix the instability. Uh, and then from a degradation perspective, which I still have a really hard time believing is a real thing, 
But if it is a real thing and you're cons or you're just really paranoid about it, you could set your temperature limit to like I don't know, like ninety degrees, um, and that should significantly help. Um, this is the right setting, right? Like this is the one that goes to one fifteen. Yeah. So and what's that going to do to our performance? Well, I guess we can check right now. Um, Because the, the thing I'm concerned about with this whole, like, use the Intel baseline profile is, like, yep, the Intel baseline profile doesn't lower the voltages for, like, the vast majority of operating conditions, right? It only lowers the voltage for flat out. Um, and I would assume most people, like, even the people who had issues with, like, oh, my CPU crashes to desktop in games, you're, like... Sure, the shader compilation and, like, loading screens when the game is decompressing its assets and stuff, like, yeah, that'll put the CPU under quite a lot of load. But in regular gameplay, you're not going to be under, you know, 100% load. You probably aren't going to be hitting, like, you won't be hitting the power limit. Um, you won't be hitting the, you sh won't really be running at, like, 100 degrees, um, right? So you won't be on the thermal limit. You won't be on the power limit. And if the CPU is still degrading, if, like, 90% of your runtime is, I don't know, 50% load or something, um, then the Intel baseline profile, like, at 50% load, it's going to run more voltage. It's going to degrade the CPU faster, not slower. Um, which is why I have such a hard time believing that this is a degradation issue, because if this is a degradation issue, the Intel baseline profiles don't address that. They fix the instability, but they do not address, like, the voltage being high um, at all. So, like, you know, that's kind of my, uh, like, my main concern with this, with this being a degradation issue. It's like, if this is degradation, then Intel has not provided a fix. And what Asus and Gigabyte, like, what Gigabyte is doing might actually make it significantly worse. The Asus baseline profile might make it slightly worse. Um, and, like, the, the, in, like, the crazy scenario would be is, what if there is no way to make a 14900K uh, stable and not degrade, right? What if, what if the spec that Intel came up with for the 14900K of, like, oh... 6 gigahertz on 2p cores and 5.7 on all of the other cores um what if the voltages required for those frequencies are just unsafe and you can't do anything about it like then what <laughs> So the 90 degree temperature limit doesn't seem to be really oh well it's not getting anywhere near 90 degrees is it so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised that it's not affecting the uh, performance. Yeah, because the thing, well, that 200, the 307 amp current limit, like it power throttles the CPU long before you get to 300 watts. Like we're not even hitting PL1 or PL2, right? Like we're not even getting to 253, we're getting to like 241. Um... I guess if you were on an air cooler, then this would still be hitting the thermal limit, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to put an air cooler on this just to, to see how that interacts with this. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I, I don't, I don't really know what to make of this situation, um. Because, like, if there's a degradation problem, then these Intel baseline profiles, in my opinion, do not address it. Unless the degradation is entirely down to the current draw being too high and has nothing to do with the voltage, right? Which, like, it's not impossible. Because I would, I would hope that this number in the Intel documentation has some basis in re reality. <laughs> right? Maybe these CPUs can handle, a like, 1.72 volts at, like, 20 amps, right? 
they just can't handle 300 amps. Like, they just can't handle, like, 300 amps or something. Um, that's not, like, I guess that's not an impossible scenario, but I, you know, like, historically, the number in the, the Intel document, like, this number in Intel documentation was not safe. Like, at all. Um, and they had that same number for 11th gen and 10th gen and technically even kind of 8th gen, right? Um, and and this will... Actually, even, even 1.52 is going to break an 8th gen CPU depending on what, like, operating temperature it's at and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, the the in Asus Intel baseline profile is better than the Gigabyte Intel baseline profile, but is it actually safe? I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. I like. I hope it's safe. Um, cause like the I guess the only other option is like that Intel does like a mass recall of CPUs and refunds everybody. Because. Or, or Intel somehow, like, magically figures out how to improve their manufacturing process to the point that they can ship 14900Ks that reach the frequency specs, but at way lower voltages than what they're currently shipping. Um, which I don't think is very realistic. So, yeah. So, I, like, that, that's, that's my thoughts on this whole scenario. Uh, on, or, like, this whole situation. Um... I would probably not use the Gigabyte Intel baseline, like Gigabyte Intel baseline profile. The Asus one, if you're desperate for stability, I guess. Like, it's not as bad as the Gigabyte one, <laughs> so that's something, I guess. Um, then again, I've only tested it with one 14900K here, and like maybe if you have a potato grade 14900KS, it's it's just as bad as the Gigabyte one. Though, I wonder if you took that p potato grade 14900KS, if it would actually hit the 1.72 volts on a gigabyte board. It probably would. So, and I guess there's also the potential that because the Apex has such good power delivery, maybe the Intel baseline profile on the Apex actually works better than it works on other Asus motherboards. I don't have other Asus... Mo well, I, I don't have low-end Asus motherboards to test with. Um... So, and I don't want to, because, like, as far as I'm concerned, like, this, the board partners and Intel should have this stuff figured out, right? Like, like, that's their whole job, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, yeah. Um, hopefully you found this video interesting, if not particularly useful, and hopefully Intel gives us, like, uh, some real information about what it, what is going on with these Intel baseline profiles, because they're not the same across all the motherboards, and some of them are really sketchy. The Asus one doesn't seem to be. Uh, I don't think, I don't really want to do any more testing on this, um, so... Yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. It's also the HOC Teespring store where there's like shirts and hoodies, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a band camp. There's a link to that down in the description below as well. And that's it. So thanks for watching and goodbye.